Welcome to this tutorial on geospatial data. You can find the materials for this tu uh, tutorial on hydroinformatics.com in the geospatial data section down here. If you want to save the text format, you can do that by clicking here either on the markdown or the PDF file um, for future reading. I will just zoom a little bit in here so that you have a better view of, uh, of the text to which I'm referring. So what are geospatial data? Well, geospatial data is anything that is spatially explicit and refers to some geographical coordinates on the globe. The way how these data sets are now represented on a computer um, differ a little bit. So before I start now with going into the different types of geospatial data that you may find, here just a list of uh, geodata sources that can help you to find different data sets. One here is the Natural Earth data uh, set, so that quick start, uh, quick start data set they can find here um, at that link address. You can find satellite images, imagery in uh, the USGS Earth Explorer and the ESA's Copernicus uh, Open Access Hub on planet.com, which is commercial. Um, of course, also Google Earth if you want. Um, you can even find LiDAR data and also this high precision uh, laser data on open topography, partially and only for some regions in the world. Um, you can also find geospatially explicit climatological data and uh, the NASA's Earth observation map. Then there are other um, geospatial data uh, for meteorology or real-time satellite, da satellite data available at wonderground.com and more data for land use. So that can also be very, very useful for any um, water resources analysis in terms of canopy cover, how much water may infiltrate in your soil, uh, how erosive is your, if your soil, so in such data you can receive, for example, from the FAO's Geo Network website. For the visualization of these geospatial data types, I strongly recommend using QGIS. Uh, I have another tutorial here on how to use QGIS, but before you get there, I also recommend to just go here through that brief introduction on the type of geodata that you can use with QGIS. The very first type here is a geodatabase, which is a struct and which is based on a structured query language. Um, that means basically you have here your geodatabase where a user can send queries to query some data. That geodatabase then can call data as a function of attribute tables, features, and features that have then geographic references, so coordinates, something like that. The features may be points, lines, or polygons, and those are typically then associated to so-called shape files that represent vector data. So these vector data, if you want to read more about how these vector data or shape files are um, de defined, you can find that uh, on that white paper here from SG. So these vector data are now either polygons, points or poly lines, uh, as I just mentioned. And what you would typically use in QGIS or uh, any other geospatial analysis then is a shapefile, a JSON file or a TIN. So let's start with the shapefile. If you're working with Python and you want to load a shapefile, work with a shapefile with a GDAL library, then the driver that you need to check out here is the S3 shapefile driver. One shapefile is not only that .shp file, it also requires a .shx file, so where the indices of the geometries are stored, then a projection file that tells your um, system what projection 
or what, what re coordinate reference system your shapefile uses and then a uh, .dbf file that contains the attribute information. So that structure here then remembers or recalls you hopefully a little bit here that geodatabase where you have these features and then the uh, coordinate references. So one shapefile requires at least these four file endings here to, to be in the same folder in order to be a shape, that your shapefile can, um, uh, can work correctly. There are other little uh, um, files that might occur, but those files you can ignore them. So they will have the same name of your shape, uh, shapefile then, and they will be created as a function a little bit of what JS software you use. Here's now just a little representation of how points look like. Um, the green things here are polylines and the bluish thing here is a polygon. I will directly go here now to the triangulated irregular networks or TINs. Uh, TINs is something that we typically use with numerical models. You will see uh, these tins, for example, in the basement uh, tutorial, but also with other uh, software like uh, uh, Telemark. If you want to work with tins in Python, I uh, recommend you using the matplotlib triangle triangle analyzer function. This here is just now here an example of uh, of a tin. And now if you get to the point where you're working with a numerical model, you probably need to transform that tin into some mesh that is compatible with your software. And that mesh then could be a silafin.slf file or a .2dm file. And QJS can also visualize these mesh file types now. In this tutorial, I will not dive into this mesh geodata type, which is based on tins. Another um, vector file data type that you will find is GeoJSON. You can check out the corresponding driver in your Python code for, for working with GDI with the GeoJSON driver name. That here is just an example how a GeoJSON looks like and I will get back to GeoJSONs in one of the Python tutorials on geospatial data processing. Now you have seen before the vector data that always consisted of some points and these points might be defined through coordinates and then be connected with each other through some lines or delineate even a polygon. Now, the big other group of geospatial data is raster data or gridded cell data. So a raster holds a value for every pixel that it is showing. One of the most common formats for that is the geotiff, so dot tiff. So maybe you already had the case that someone sent you a .tiff file and you tried to open that with your standard system image view and you just saw black and white and it didn't resemble anything. Well, that might have been a GeoTiff that you need to open then with a QJS. Other grid for, uh, or raster formats are the grid format that consists of multiple files, again, similar to the shape file, and the um, floating point raster format and other ASCII formats. If you're working with a GeoTIFF file, you also always have a second file that is a .tfv file, which is a, a six-line plain world file that contains information about the geo reference, uh, geo coordinate references. For working with GeoTIFFs in Python and GDAL, you want to check out the driver name GTIFF. This image here now shows an example of a combination of the geospatial data types that you have seen so far 
where the lines delineate polylines or represent polylines, the dots represent major cities, and the background pixels are a raster from the Natural Earth dataset. I had already briefly mentioned LiDAR and uh, under LiDAR datasets that can also go along with underwater digital elevation models. And here just the hint, um, most digital elevation models nowadays have a very high precision because of that uh, emergent um, LiDAR technique, so that sends laser points uh, to the ground if it's airborne and helps you to identify where is their earth and uh, results then in very precise digital elevation models. LiDAR can even penetrate water up to two meters deep as a function of how clear the water is and can then with that also build a bathymetry. So a bathymetry is then the underwater digital elevation model or DEM. One very important and common item of all geospatial data type is the projection system and the coordinate reference systems that they use. You have several types of projections that are required to turn the globe into some flat map that you can consider uh, through, a ge uh, through a GIS viewer such as QJS. When you're working with multiple geospatial data types, I strongly recommend you always make sure they have compatible uh, projections and coordinate reference systems. When you're using coordinate reference systems, be aware that they all also have different precisions. So if you are using something like OpenStreetMap or Google Map or whatever, they use a particular simplified um, a projection system that has a precision of two meters only. While when we are working with a numerical modeling or landscape analysis for hydraulics, we need, need a little bit more detail than two meters. So we need um, projections that provide us with higher precision. And for that reason, we can most we mostly need to use um, particular projections and coin reference systems that apply to region uh, to the, to the region only where we are working in. So here, just for an example, um, in uh, one coin reference system that you want to use here uh, in Central Europe would be thirty one four nine three. So these numbers refer to EPSG numbers. Um, you can uh, retrieve EPSG numbers or find also conversions of coordinates from different co uh, re coordinate reference system and projections on EPSG.io. So I invite you here to have a look at this uh, little website. When you're working in QJS, I will get back to that also in the QGIS tutorial. You can set your uh, coordinate reference project of the uh, of your project in which you're working in here by clicking on the top left of your window, Project Properties and CRS, um, and then make sure to select an coordinate a coordinate system that is appropriate for your project and analysis. For shape files, I had already mentioned that there is that little dot .prj file and that .prj file basically defines now the projection system that a shape file should use along with other items such as what units to use. So some um, uh, ref coin reference systems would use degrees as units, others would use meters. Just here, a uh, little fun fact. Now, the thing that Google uses today or, um, is called the EPSG 3857. So that is its um, EPSG.io number here. And that was formally referenced here as uh, 900913. Um, that uh, uh, 
signified Google. So thanks for watching this tutorial on geospatial data types.